What's up, guys? Dan Clementi with a uh, a review. Well, sort of a review. An unboxing first. So we got this box in the mail the other day from Canada. Oh, Canada. All right, I'll stop. And uh, it is the newest um, CNC uh, for newbie, their smaller machine that they put out. I don't have the exact sizes in front of me. Um, so they sent me this to review. And uh, I've had it in my basement since Monday. And I have not yet opened it. So we're going to open it right now and see what is inside. Ooh, a piece of foam. Let me put this aside. I'll put this over here. And then we got that. We got insulation foam. And then we have a bunch of boxes. I don't know if these are just boxes. Let me see. I think these are boxes with stuff inside. Let me see. I'm not sure. Nope, they're just boxes for support. All right. Nothing in that one. Good shipping boxes. See, this comes out here pretty easy. Good. My wife's going to kill me making another mess. Oh, look, more foam. All right, oh, this. Here we go. Nothing in that one. Let's see here. Might be the best packed machine I've ever seen. Oh, there it is. This is the UC100. Uh, that would be the uh, driver. And let's see what else we got here. This is like a cute little size machine here. Let me see here if I can somehow get this out without breaking anything. I don't know if I'd be able to do this. Hold on a second. Spindle holder. And I think there's a spindle there. All right, hold on. We're going to try to get this out. I'll tell you what. We'll cut the video. I'll get it out of the box. And we'll put a peck on when I get it out of the box. There it is. The CNC for Newbie. This is their small miniature size machine. And uh, let's see if we can get all this packing material off. And we'll uh, add it to the collection of stuff that has to go in the garbage. Look at this, huh? There's the spindle. Now, uh, the spindle does not come with it. Uh, it was included for this review from them, but the, the spindle will be available separately. So this does not come with the spindle. So make sure we all are on the same page there. So when you buy it, you don't get a spindle. Um, you can buy the spindle separate. So... Here's the front of the machine. It's like this cute little CNC. Um, it's all wired up, everything's built inside. It's got an aluminum uh, T-track. Uh, again, I don't know the exact size. I will put it in the description. There's an emergency stop button, uh, some kind of knob there, some kind, I'm not sure what that's for. And then you also have the spindle here, uh, already attached, ready to go. I just gotta mount it but that would be uh, a spindle. But I'll put some information about this in the, um, in the description of the video so you guys can see what it is. Uh, but again, just so we're all on the same page, this does not come with it. Normally it'll just come with the CNC machine uh, without the spindle and all the other stuff that's with it. Um, but that will not be included. So we'll put this all together and we'll fire it all up and uh, we will see how this thing runs because it's already pretty much put together for you. Um, Minus a couple things here that need to be done, um, you know, just screwing on the uh, screwing on the spindle and the z-axis to the to the z-axis itself. But this thing is a very like getting out of the box was it's really heavy, very very heavy duty. Uh, I can tell already this is going to be a great little addition to the shop. Uh, I make a lot of badges, and I think this is going to be perfect for getting a lot of those badges caught up on the orders. So I am really looking forward to putting this all together. And uh, we'll put it together. So I wanted to show the underside of this thing. This is how self-contained this whole unit is. So this is the front of the machine, the e-stop, and a... Uh, so I'm not sure what this dial is actually for. I have to find out. I'll have to ask them. Um, I'm sure it's some maybe controls speed or something, I'm sure. Um, everything's self-contained under the machine itself. You have uh, 
your power supply underneath with a plug on the back end here. And then you also have uh, your driver. Uh, you have a driver here that came with it. Let me get it over here. Hold on. Ah, there it is. That came with it there, the driver board. And then everything self-contained built into one controller underneath the machine. So everything's all self-contained within the unit, which is kind of cool. Uh, very, very, uh, very impressive house. It's not very large. It's, it's very small, very compact. So if you're just starting out in the CNC machining type thing and you're looking for something that's kind of, you know, I don't have a lot of room. I only have a countertop. Uh, you know, this is this is perfect. So, I mean, you look at it. I wish I could compare the two. I mean, this is the this is the full size. Uh, which one is this? This is like the thousand millimeter one that they make when they first started making them. And then you can see this. This is a whole takes up a whole workbench. And then this one is just basically on an old kitchen table. Uh, so you can see the difference. But we'll get back to it here. Going to put it all together and uh, keep going with the video. So stay assembled tuned. Assembled the Z axis onto the machine. Very very simple. Uh, literally four screws. So it comes with four screws. Uh, it'll come with two short ones and two long ones. The long ones go through the top part of the Z-axis, just like any other CNC for a newbie machine. And then, let me go around here on the front, and then the two shorter ones will go in right over here in these two spots. So two short up here, and the back side will be the two longer ones. So that's what it looks like all set up. Again, it's like this cute little machine that I absolutely think it's adorable. Uh, but I bet you, with what I'm looking at, I bet you it's a very powerful machine. It's very, very heavy coming out of the box. Uh, I didn't get a weight on it, but I'm, it's pretty heavy. The, um, the box shipping weight, um, I can look up here. I don't even know. It doesn't say it on the box, I don't think. No, I don't see it on the, on the box. But, but there it is. It's all set up, and it's ready to go. I just got to uh, obviously plug everything in. Um, you have to attach these two wires here to uh, one of the limit switches down here. So that'll be a pretty easy thing to do. And, it's, and that's it. And then you got to go in and... and uh, I believe you got to activate the uh, controller or the uh, software. I don't even know anything about. I'm, I've always used Gerbil, G R B L. Uh, this is something new to me, so I have to figure out how this whole thing works and operates. It'll be a little different of a, a learning curve, but I think we'll be okay. So there it is in all its glory. It's set up. Uh, just got to plug it all in, get it all wired up. It's like I said, it already comes wired for you right in the back, and then the bottom has everything else. It has this wonderful T track, aluminum T track on top. It has. Uh, stepper motors um, on the back side and on each axis and again it comes he he gave me the spindle to try it uh but this does not come with it you can uh you can usually buy a dewalt 611 i believe is the number the yellow one uh he gives he gave me the uh he gave me the bracket for that right here the the z the uh, spindle mount so if i want to switch it out but for now i'll use this one uh just to give it a shot that's what was in the box so i'll try it out but there it is um so stay tuned uh, the next video in the series of this video will be uh, probably in a couple days due to some work-related issues that I got to get done outside of the house. So we will, uh, we will continue this video here. But you will be seeing the video in one solid video versus uh, where I'm taking a little bit of a break. So we'll see you on the next part of the clip. So what we're trying to do right now is we're, we're trying to figure out the uh, spacing uh, with the machine. So we have everything all uh, obviously laid out. The machine is put together. Uh, everything is everything functions everything works properly but now we got to figure out well we need to put some kind of uh substrate on this this bed because you don't want the bit drilling into the bed so what i did was i cut some different slats of different uh different different uh, thicknesses this one is a uh, this is an inch one inch i did some two inches i did have some three inches but i cut them because they were a little too thick and the goal is to try to lay out um in a pattern basically to give some spacing so you have enough room for a T-nut to slide in and be able to clamp down on material. Uh, the only issue I saw so far with this is that there's an even number of slots. There was eight. I think it would have been easier if there was uh, nine or seven where you could have had an even spacing. Because if you put the uh, a two-inch slat in between, you end up with uh, this weird off-centered one on the end here. And then it's, you know, if you're OCD like I am, it's, it's not lined up. But these are two inch apart, leaving room in between for each, for a T-nut to go in or a, a T-bolt. And then also tomorrow, uh, I have coming from Amazon, uh, Series 40 T-nuts and some M5 screws uh, to be able to drill a, a countersunk hole into each one of these pieces of MDF. 
and then it will it will clamp these tight to the to the aluminum bed. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I get I cut some one inch pieces as well, and you know they they work well too, but then their spacing is a little bit further away. Um, you know if you do it that way, your your spacing is a little further between each each slat. So the next option uh, could be to make two and a half inch wide because three inches was too big. Uh, one inch is a little too small. So maybe try a two and a half inch slot or slat and see if that uh, maybe helps in getting the spacing a little bit less. Because, uh, you, you know, if you put a piece of material, you know, on there, you want to have it supported, obviously, you know, so it's so it's supported. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at right now in the build process of this. Um, just trying to get it done and uh, at least try to get a carve done on it. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. So we're working on it. We, we have the, uh, I said, I'm going to go try to cut a two and a half inch and see if that helps at all. That might help um, come over a little bit more. I'm a little worried like on this one where it's going to overshoot a little bit but we're getting there we're uh i think i'm gonna probably stay with the two inch though is what i'm probably gonna do so but don't take my word for it if you buy one of these machines you do what you think is best but i think the two inch is going to give me the best spacing and i want to have um I, I, that's why i wish it was an odd spacing because i would have had clearance on the other side to be able to put on an end you know end and end maybe uh for these these t-bolts but we can always clamp down material in here and here. You just got to know that you're limited uh, on the size of the bed to what you can cut out. So as long as if you know that and you and you buy a machine that's uh, this size, you know that you have to be able to prepare yourself for much smaller cuts. Whereas uh, something you know uh, like this got a lot more room and a lot it's a lot easier to to mess with your sizes a little bit. So that's kind of where we're at. Uh, we'll get back to you here shortly once we have them all drilled into place and we'll go for our test carve. So we picked up um, these two things on Amazon yesterday, a box of M5 um, screws and these uh, 4040 style series T-nuts. These are uh, pretty hefty duty T-nuts uh, and they slide into uh, the track to give you some MDF. So this is what I picked up. Um, you'll need these for sure if you're gonna lay down MDF slats uh, on your bed. What we decided on, uh, I, on the previous clip, what I decided on doing was using four slats, two inches wide and going, uh, and going every other slat. And that would leave a space um, in between to give me a, a spot to be able to clamp, um, if I have one here, be able to clamp a, uh, I don't have one, uh, a T-bolt into the track so I can clamp down material when I'm doing work. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, we're, we're just working on uh, putting um, some marks on each one to, to drill a hole. And then a few other things you'll need if you don't have them. If you're gonna put in the uh, M5 nuts is you're gonna wanna get, uh, you're gonna wanna drill a hole. And then you're also gonna want to, um, you're also gonna wanna buy a countersink so you can countersink your hole, uh, countersink the screw into the MDF so you don't have the uh, bits not hitting any of the uh, the metal of the M5 nut. So that's where we're at. So uh, we'll be back in a few minutes and I'll show you what we did. Okay, done. It took a little bit of work, but uh, you got to watch out for some of these little screws here. Uh, they're in the front. So make sure that I went on the first ones. You can see here, like I only went an inch in. Uh, make sure you go a little further back. And then on the back, I had to mess up a little bit, but that's okay. This is just a wasteboard. Uh, same thing. Make sure you come in about an inch and a half or more. Uh, and this one, I don't know what happened here. The the whole uh, the T-nut just got stuck. <laughs> I had to drill it out. Just kind of don't know what happened there. But um, so that's all done. We've got four slats, starting with the second, fourth, the sixth and the eighth slat, leaving us one, two, three, four spots that we could put in uh, some of those T-nuts. And I have them over here on this machine. That one's stuck in there, uh, right over here. My workbench is a mess, but I don't care. 
and those can go in there and then clamp down to the material. Um, I don't know which ones I'm going to use. I'm not even sure how I'm going to even use ones over here because there's not much room to clamp. So I, I have to figure that out still. But uh, this is a complete learning environment for me on this smaller size machine. Um, when I built this one, uh, I gave myself some room uh, to clamp like on one of these in one, two, three blocks or, uh, you know, a piece of wood. So when I'm clamping down, I can use that as my clamp. Um, but this one, I don't really know yet what I'm going to do, but I'll have to figure it out. So let's keep playing here and uh, we'll move forward and uh, try to see what we can get out of this. Um, I actually uh, switched the slats around. I, I ended up going the far left side, starting there and then going with this one empty. And the reason why is, is most stuff when you're using V-Carve is uh, you could set your zero anywhere you want, but a lot of times you're gonna zero from the far left corner. Uh, you could zero from the right corner. That's just not something I do. So I figured move it over to the left side and then gives me some room to clamp onto here with a smaller, not this one. And this is one of my old clamps, but um, I need to make some shorter clamps or I need to get some longer T-bolts. Um, but yeah, so I can clamp on and have something that's solid to clamp onto instead of hitting the side here. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it's ready to be carved. Uh, that's what it looks like. It comes out of the box, like I said earlier, ready to go. You just gotta attach the uh, I would remember the z-axis to it and uh pretty much add the slats get some uh get some 40 series t-nuts get some m5 uh screws and roll with it it's pretty much it so that's where we're at and uh we'll start here at a carve and we'll see you in a few minutes all right so we're back uh what we're gonna do is uh we are going to just do a small little test carve and uh, all i did was uh just set up just something i don't like to use a a big a good piece of wood i'm gonna use something just a small piece of pine just to test some words, see how it works. And uh, what, I, what I did was I have it all zeroed out uh, using the uh, UC CNC software. And um, now when I made this, I didn't make, I made the slats a little too big and I don't have my, uh, my bolts don't go big enough. So what I need to do is either get uh, bigger T bolts or um, another option you could do is you can just screw down the material to the waste board. And that's, I've done that plenty of times. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to screw it down to the wasteboard real quick. Uh, and then we have this carve ready to go. Uh, and we are going to just test this carve and see how it comes out. So, uh, give me one sec. I'll be back in a sec. Okay. So I have just, uh, all I did was just took two screws. Again, this is just a test carve with some words on it. I'm not actually saving this. I'm just more of a test to see is the machine functioning is X, Y, and Z operating properly. And, uh, so what we're going to do is I have the machine already zeroed out, uh, using the UC CNC software. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this over here. And we're gonna use our low left corner as our zero spot. Right there. And then we'll use, um, I don't have a zero block for this particular machine. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just uh, use a piece of paper. So give me one second and we'll get that. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna zero um, the bit onto the wood. Um, if you have a zero block, which I do not have for this particular machine, you would use a zero block, which I use for my larger um, CNC for newbie machine. But I'm going to use just a piece of paper. And all you're doing is putting the paper down. And I'm going to uh, just have the bit touch the wood uh, or touch the paper. Let's get that. Uh, I don't want to go too deep. Make it uh, very minor movements. That's perfect. And we're going to zero that right there. And we're going to keep that as our zero for Z. Okay. And then raise that back up. And then also what you want to do is make sure that the bit is in the corner, uh, lower left corner of the wood. So let's see here. I'd say that's pretty, that's a good spot. We're gonna keep it right there and that's gonna zero out. We're gonna zero X and Y. So if we go to zero, we should be pretty much at our low left corner of the wood. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up the, um, the actual tool path.
I'm going to bring this over here real quick. Don't mind my messy workbench. I do a lot of work. And there is our, what our carve is going to look like. There's our zero location in the yellow right here. And then there's our carve. All right, so let's take a look here and see. Put this back onto the machine. Move this back a little bit. We are a low budget film, folks. Low budget. All right, here we go. Let's see how this works. Put the bit on. And we are carving. Now, uh, the only thing differently that I would do is I would prefer to use a zero block. Uh, I think it would make the words a little bit deeper at the moment, but right now it's working, it's cutting. That's what we want. Um, again, this is uh, just a, you know one way to cut, but if you're looking for uh, an exact uh, dynamic of cutting where you're getting the exact distance, you wanna use a zero block. I use um, the one from, it's called a Chiquetra uh, from uh, Charlie Thomas. So this is the one I have, uh, but um, the one I this is this works just as well as as, uh, as anything else. But it is cutting away, and then you have control over here. If you look down, see if I can pull this down a little bit without uh, making my phone fall off. There, you have control of your of your uh, your bit speed by this. Now, eventually, I probably will add a uh, router that's controlled, or not a router, but a spindle that's controlled uh, by the software instead of having to worry about the speed. Right now, I got it at the full speed uh, just because. But it's definitely cutting. And we'll be back in a minute when it's done. So you can, you can see here is the software. Uh, this is the UCCNC software. For those of you, I'm used to... Uh, I'm used to this software here, Universal Control or Universal G-Code Sender. Um, so this is kind of a getting used to type thing. But it, I do like that it shows you the progress of where the bit is and it shows you the toolpath. Otherwise, the software is almost the same. Um, a couple new things you got to get used to learning about zeroing and, and whatnot. But otherwise, it's, it seems pretty easy. Like if you stop a car, which I actually ended up doing with this one, I just stopped it for a second, and you want to start over again because I want to go a little deeper. Um, you got to rewind the file versus just hit stopping. It'll just stop the bit like a pause basically. Um, but otherwise it's still running really well. Um, all I did was I just wrote a, their name, a test carve using the CNC. You got to drag the bit a little bit here accidentally. That was just me getting used to the software, but it's working. Um, I always recommend using a, a, you know, a test carve. Don't be using any uh, really expensive material. Uh, you know, you don't want to ruin a piece of cherry or a piece of walnut when you're learning the software and learning the machine. Uh, you know, something like what I'm doing right now, I'm working on the other machine here, the other CNC for new machine. I'm using, uh, I'm making a badge uh, that looks just like this. But I'm, I'm very used to um, the software. I'm very used to this machine and how it functions. I'm not used to that machine yet. Uh, you know, I'm making thick things like this on the bigger machine, whereas this smaller machine is not going to give that capability, unfortunately. This machine is going to be perfect for my other badges, uh, these ones, uh, Pennsylvania State Police ones, these ones are the perfect size uh, for that machine. So I'm gonna be using that machine primarily for these uh, and these once I get used to making them um, and how to, how to operate it. Now with this other software, you do gotta remember that when you're in VCarve, you have to set up a different uh, post-processing file in order for the machine to cut this. You couldn't use G-code on this. It doesn't use G-code, or it uses G-code, but it uses a, a UCCNC style G-code uh, versus it being the uh, X-Carve style G-code. You know, so like when I go to here and I go to post and I go to file and I save the badges, uh, I have, you know, in this one I only have, in this computer I only have my JTEC, my X-Carve, and uh, millimeter, but if I go upstairs to my other, my main computer, I have it set up for uh, this machine to be able to cut the files for here. So what I will do is in the video, uh, I'm describing it, I'll put it in the uh, details part of the section of the video, I'll put a link to that file so you guys know exactly uh, where to find it. So this is done.
Uh, so the only thing with this, again, since it's not automatically, I got to turn off the... Uh, I turn the bit off so it doesn't spin no more. But if we go over here and blow it out, you can see we did cut. It is done. A test carved using the CNC for Newbies Mini. And there it is. So stand by for a few minutes. I'm going to give you my final thoughts and uh, be back in a minute. All right. So my thoughts. So here's the carve that we just did. A little test carve. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to come back backwards or not. It might. But it just says a, a test carve using the CNC for Newbie Mini. Uh, as I said earlier, I recommend always using a test piece of wood before you go into cutting a piece of cherry or walnut. I am still not 100% with this machine yet and how it operates and everything like that. There's some learning curve to it with the newer software, uh, but I like it. I do like the software's functionality. Um, some things that I spoke with them about that I had issues with that has nothing to do with them was I had some software-related issues where I couldn't zero the material without it freezing up on me. So my workaround with that was I would home the machine. I would put the bit where I wanted it zero it and then reset the machine and it would keep the zero it was really weird uh whereas with the universal g-code sender software i don't have to do that um so that was a little bit of we had some we talked through that for a little while i uh i was advised to go to the company that does the uc cnc software and they never really got me a fix but i got it working to where it works um so that was the only real hiccup was that the second thing that was kind of uh tough was figuring out how to get the slats all laid out because you want to have, you know, you want to have some kind of waste board down the road. I think I'm going to change this out and just put a solid piece of material and I'm going to use the same as my other machine with the T-Track, which you've seen in my other videos. I'm going to use the blue T-Track and just do that. I just mill, mill the slots and then stick it in there and I'll be good. I don't know if I like the, the race slat style of, you know, it's just not a really big machine to have slats. Um, the machine itself, it's really cool. It's it's small though. Is it? You know, if you're looking for something to make small items and uh, you know, small things like the badges that I make and stuff, this is perfect. Um, if you're looking for big things, you know, like a, like a big sign like this, I mean, that's not gonna fit. Be able to cut it. Um, if you're, you know, even things like, you know, I make things that are this, you know, signs above your bed, stuff like that. This is not going to fit. It's not a big enough bed. So if you're looking to make some small things and some smaller items, like the badges, and I'll always show these, like things that are like this size here, these will fit. You put it right, you know, get your, get your amazing material, screw it down or, or use the, the bolts and you can cut these all day long. Um, it's not hard to do. But if you're looking for a bigger machine, then I don't recommend this one at all. This is more for the person who doesn't have a lot of space, who wants to get into the CNC world. It has really good software, really good hardware. The machine is a solid 10. It thing is a brick. The thing, the box, when I got it, it weighed so much. But it's a great machine, but it's just not something that I would use a lot of because I do a lot of longer items. Uh, but again, this will be my go-to for my badges. And I do probably more badges than I'd like to admit. I mean, it's it's every week, three, four, five badges a week. So the, I'm constantly pumping out those badges. Um, so do I like the machine? Yes, 100%. Would I keep this router? No. This, remember, was in the very beginning of the video, was given to me as part of the review. Um, he did provide me with, uh, I didn't open this up, but another, another mount, I'll open it up real quick, for, ah, if I can get it out here. There it is, got it. A bigger mount, he gave me that uh, for a bigger router uh, or a bigger spindle. So I am gonna eventually upgrade the spindle and put this on, um, this is gonna get swapped out and get a bigger spindle from uh, Amazon. Um, it does come with the UC CNC software from what I understand, that's what was with mine. And uh, the software is really, really good. You just got to remember in VCarve to add that post processor because it won't work without that, po that post processor. It'll, it won't know what to do. It doesn't know, it doesn't understand the, the movements like it does for the GRBL for um, the universal G-code sender. Um, so all in all, I give the machine, as for the rigidness of it, a 10 out of 10, 100%. The thing is, is very heavy, very rigid. I mean, it, it weighs a ton. It's very well built. 
Uh, it's as well built as my bigger machine, 100%. It's on the same quality level. Uh, after coming from the X-Carve two, three years ago to what I've come to now, I've had the X-Carve, I've had the lead from Open Builds, I've had the CNC for Noob machine here, which you've seen in my other video, and I've had this machine. This is my fourth CNC machine. The CNC for newbie machines are the ones that are still in my basement. They don't, they haven't left. So that just shows you, I got rid of the lead and I got, in the X-Carve, I remanufactured re that into the new machine, into the new carve. Um, so yes, this machine is definitely on par with a smaller hobbyist machine. Like the smaller ones you see at like Woodcraft, you'll see those smaller, what are that? Not Chipoko, but the uh, Shark CNC. Same size, but more in a better price range. And in my opinion, way more you know, stable and rigid. So uh, 10 out of 10 on the rigidness, 10 out of 10 on the actual, the machine build itself. Um, again, size is my only issue, and that's the truth. And getting it out of the box, it does require some preparation. The slats, uh, the wiring, you know, even though it was already pre-wired, I had to get this all put together, which was no big deal. Uh, just the slats itself and figuring out your spacing. And that's really it. I mean, otherwise the machine is, is perfect. Uh, and I will be using it a lot come here with these orders I got coming in. So otherwise, that's my review. I like it. Again, I'll say it one more time. I love it, but it's not something that I would buy. If I had to choose to be between buying the bigger one or the smaller one, I'd go with the bigger one. Because you never know when you're going to want to cut something bigger versus here I'm only limited by the size of the deck. Um, so that's my review. I really, again, I'm very grateful for them giving them... Uh, giving me the machine to review it. Uh, the review took a little bit longer than I uh, to do than I wanted to. With a, and I had told them that I had at one point I had 45 to 50 orders in the queue waiting to go out. So I just got a little bit pushed back with orders. But now that I'm finally caught up with only like five or six more to go, I finally said, okay, it's time to get this done. Get a test carb going and go from there. So I am very grateful to them. They are an absolutely fantastic company. Uh, they are they communicate with me all the time. I have a rumor in the future that there's going to be some really cool upgrades for this. I won't say them in the video, uh, but there are going to be some really cool upgrades for this machine in the future. Uh, so stand by for those. But otherwise, guys, check it out. If you want a smaller machine, you don't want to buy the Shark from Woodcraft, and you don't want to spend $4,000 on a Shark that has the same bed size, look at this machine. This machine is solid, uh, rigid, and you'll really, really enjoy it if you're carving smaller things. Uh, but that's it. That's all I got. I hope you guys really liked it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, check it out. Check out their website. I'll put a, a link to the on the bottom of the uh, website in the bottom. I'm not one of these YouTubers that really gets the whole like, check out, follow, and below. I'm not really into that. Just like the video. If you like it, subscribe. Check it out. They'll, I'm sure if this video gets as many reviews as the last video, they'll give me more stuff to review. So just check it out. Enjoy it. And uh, I hope you guys keep on seeing, seeing, and we'll see you in the future. Later, guys. See ya.